There's a football game today, so let's talk about something weird on Obscure Old Games. Today is the super, uh, the big game. Yeah, that. So I figured that for the new episode of Obscure Old Games, I'd talk about a weird little football game on the Sega Genesis. And I'm sure most people would assume Mutant League Football, but no. Mutant League Football is a totally awesome and ridiculous football game, but I'm not going to talk about it for two reasons. First and foremost, I don't think it's that obscure. In fact, I don't know anybody who isn't familiar with it. I mean, it got a Saturday morning cartoon. The second reason is, from a gameplay perspective, I actually think it's overshadowed by the sequel, Mutant League Hockey. So what game am I talking about? Jerry Glanville's Pigskin Foot Brawl for the Sega Genesis. Because every sports game for the Sega Genesis needed a coach's or player's name attached to it, and um, well, in this case, Jerry Glanville was all they could afford. This game actually started life in the arcade as Pigskin 621 AD and was developed by Midway. It was essentially a follow-up to Arch Rivals, their crazy arcade basketball game. The, the crazy arcade basketball game they made before NBA Jam. Anyways, Pigskin had a moderate success, although I've never seen an actual arcade cabinet of it ever in my life, but apparently it was good enough that Razorsoft, a small software publisher located in Oklahoma, decided that they would license it for a home port on the Sega Genesis and shell out to attach Jerry Glanville's name to it. Now, given that Razorsoft didn't last very long and this was their second to last game, I'm assuming they didn't get the return on investment they hoped for with Jerry Glanville attached. Regardless, it's a pretty fun little game, though it bears little resemblance to actual football. In fact, it's more like medieval rugby. There are no downs, no plays, no penalties, no illegal forward passes, none of that. In that respect, Mutant League is much more of an actual football game, as are Midway's other arcade football titles, Super High Impact and the Blitz series. The, uh, the instruction manual tells this insane story about how in 621 a uh, court jester named Innifel created the game of football because his his jokes were bombing in court and he didn't want to be executed by the king so he invents medieval rugby or whatever I guess what well, I don't why why is this much story necessary for a football game there's even character bios in here like every player has a bio why is this much backstory needed for football? It's, it's football. S sort of, more or less. Each team has a captain, Thor and Attila, who is controlled by the player. The rest of your team is computer controlled. Thor and Attila can grab weapons on the field, a field which, by the way, is littered with all manner of hazards. Also, unlike Mutant League, there's not much variety in the way of fields. The first half is always a big open outdoor field, and the second half is always a dungeon. Weapons can be used to dispatch your opponent's teammates, but they respawn after a touchdown. You can also score points just by having the ball, with a possession meter that fills at the top of the screen to award bonus points. And well, there's not much more to it than that. It's very clearly a sequel to Arch Rivals, which is better known, but honestly less fun. It's pretty, it's got a unique art style, some unique gameplay mechanics, but ultimately it's a pretty shallow experience, which is what you expect from an arcade game from the early 90s. I got this copy for 10 bucks. This is complete, has the manual and everything. So if you see it out in the wild, you probably won't have to shell out too much for it. So it's probably worth the pickup just 
because it is it is fun for a few games. It's an enjoyable game. It's just there's not a lot to it. And if you've already played Mutant League Football to death, and you're looking for another sort of weird arcade style uh, football game, it's it's a good it's a good pickup. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, this game has trolls in it. Yeah, there's a mechanic where if you start losing, you get a troll on your team. They can't be killed with weapons, they're really aggressive, and they can turn the tide of a game. It's weird, but a fun little aspect. And that's it. That's really all there is to this game. There's no season, there's no league, there's, no, there's none of that stuff. It's just a game of two teams playing medieval rugby football. Um, there's only two teams, you can't choose, and, you know, except by playing as player one or player two, and that's it. And, but, again, it's pretty cheap, so it's definitely worth a look and a pickup. Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. And make sure to check out uh, onthestick.com, where you can find all of our podcasts and uh, other stuff there, articles, other videos, same name, different game, is making a comeback very soon. And uh, you can also subscribe either on Blip or on YouTube. This, these shows get posted to both of those places. So make sure to give us a, a subscription there, either in one or, or both places. Feel free. I won't stop you. And, uh, and on that note, this is my last episode as host of Obscure Old Games. Um, I will be uh, doing things behind the camera, editing and that kind of thing, but I will not be... Uh, on screen anymore for this show going forward. So, uh, but I, I've got a I've got a suitable replacement lined up. So get excited about that, and we'll see you next time on Obscure Old Games. <laughs>